Hello folks, how are you all doing? So this video is geared more towards uh, people that are new to the channel because if you've been following along with the series then you'll probably know half of this anyway but it's also for people that are thinking about taking this leap and living in a van during winter because it is a bit of a learning curve and I'm sort of figuring it out as I go along so I thought it'd be nice to do a little video to sort of share a few of my findings um, for people that are thinking about doing it. I'm just going to sort of go over everything one by one, um, all the sort of changes I've made that gear the van towards winter. There's a few things that you need to take into consideration when you're building the van in the first place um, if you are doing a self build which I would definitely recommend. I guess we can start off proof of the pudding it's currently minus six where I am. It's uh, I'm in Chamonix in the French Alps, and well, as you can see, I'm in a t-shirt. The only reason I'm wearing a hat is because my hair's a disaster. I don't really need to wear a hat. And in here right now, it is 20 degrees. So, you know, I might not be an expert on this kind of thing, but what I've done and the changes I've made apparently. Uh, do the job so I'm going to share them with you now so the the first thing the number one first thing I will say um, it's pretty like it's pretty obvious we'll get that out of the way first because I can't really show you insulation now if there's any part of your van that you're going to spend your money on make it the insulation forget your gadgets forget everything to start with the number one priority when you're doing a van build is the insulation and that applies for summer and winter um, because if you don't have good insulation in the summer you're going to cook and I mean properly cook uh, in my first van I did a really shit job on the insulation I was in the in southern Spain in the desert area it was 48 degrees um, it's it, probably as close as you can get to hell on earth actually <laughs> uh, but also when I was building this van first because I did it in the winter when I first got it uh, I didn't do the insulation for a while because um, I was working on other things and even in England there was icicles this long hanging off the inside of the roof so yeah insulation that is the key Mine's, the, the insulation that I've used is uh, I used an XP foam, like a self adhesive foam. So I've stuck that on all of the metal, all of the flat panels, the roof, the floor, everywhere, even in the cab. Uh, followed that with a layer of Reflectix foil, so the bubble wrap foil, just a single layer of that. Stuck that over everything. Um, so that almost works as like the first vapor barrier, if you like. Um, I mean, I've not gone too mental with the whole vapor barrier thing, but so far it's been all right. So yeah, a layer of that, and then I've done two layers of 30 mil Thinsulate insulation. It's like a, a white recycled plastic wool stuff. Um, you're better off not to use fiberglass. I know a lot of people do like an expanding foam thing where they spray it all on, but this is how I went with it. Um, it's the same stuff that you get in like coats and things it's about that and then two layers of that stuck that on everything and then an, another layer of uh, Reflectix foil over the top of all of that sealed all that in uh, with the proper Reflectix tape and stuff so it's all sealed and then obviously the wood over the top so my insulation I mean it's about that especially on the roof I think the roof is a good sort of what four inches maybe of insulation um, but that's why I went with such a big van because obviously I knew I was going to lose the head height but I can you know in here like the floor as well that's exactly the same but obviously the floor is compacted a bit so it's not as bad as the roof but I can in the highest point here you know I can stand up there's room like it doesn't matter if it's one centimetre room or two feet of room as long as my head doesn't touch the ceiling I don't care as soon as your head starts touching the ceiling I think that would make me uh, feel a bit claustrophobic yeah so anyway that's out of the way 
So insulation, that is the number one thing that you need to do. Uh, I can't stress that enough. Just make sure that is your priority from the get go. Focus on that, do that, get that done right first time. I've not even done mine completely right. You know, there's bits like the ribs. I didn't bother insulating the ribs, I wish I had. Make sure you spend your time doing that and you'll be fine. Everything else is just details. So the next part we'll come to will be the bed situation. I guess everyone's got their own opinion on this, but this is how it's working for me. And honestly, at night, I am like really warm you know plenty warm enough can even the, considering the temperature outside uh, the reason I've done it this way is because for as long as I can I don't want to run the heater at night just because peace of mind and I don't want to rinse all my diesel if I don't need to so the bag this bag is I got it from Mountain Warehouse it's a Summit 250 sleeping bag I think it's a three out of four season bag um, it is a mummy bag I know a lot of people I myself uh, used to hate sleeping bags to be honest with you um, I hated feeling sort of claustrophobic and you know not being able to move my feet but when it comes to this kind of lifestyle you got to make compromises and this sleeping setup that I've got now you know I sleep in my boxes every night the other night it was minus 15 and I'm fine you know genuinely I'm not cold um, if I was obviously I would change it but doing it this way allows me to sleep without the heating on uh, and in complete comfort so it's a Summit 250 bag I think it's rated down to minus one comfortable temperature uh, extreme temperature is minus 17 but obviously it doesn't get that cold in here so I have the bag and then I sleep under the duvet as well uh, I've got it on top at the minute just because it's easier to get in but I'll get in the bag pull the duvet back this is a winter duvet uh, it's not mega thick but anyway you get sort of an idea it's you know it's a decent decent duvet and that is plenty that is honestly plenty I think the design of my van how I've built the bed high does help because all the heat that I generate all goes up sits up there and it lasts for a long time but yeah that so far that has been the best way obviously in the summer I just sleep on top of everything like I don't even use a quilt that's the sleeping situation uh, and I mean honestly like I th I thought you know even when I was building the van I was like yeah just, there's no way I'm staying in sleeping bags I want nice big bed duvet the lot um, but your your opinion soon changes when you get into these kind of climates I can tell you that now but that works for me anyway so that's how we roll and then on a really cold night if my feet get a bit chilly I'll stick a pair of socks on and that's about it other than that it's literally just boxes I don't wear like pajamas or anything not sure how it's gonna be when if it gets to like minus 20 or something but I'm sure I'll be fine the next thing I'm gonna talk about which is probably less obvious is on the floor so as you can see I'm standing on this little mat now and this rug here um, floors a bit dirty sorry about that you won't believe how much of a difference just having a rug makes obviously I have the hard floor now if I stand here my feet are already cold like quick as that and that's fine like that is such a simple little thing um, but it makes a world of difference honestly just having having rugs down I mean I don't have that bit but I don't normally stand there but here especially when you you know doing stuff at the kitchen and whatever having that means you can walk around in your socks it's just a lot more comfortable to be honest um, but yeah I would definitely recommend I wouldn't recommend carpeting a van uh, because it's a ball eight to clean so hard floor and then have mats that you can take and shake outside that's the best way because they will get shit up like it, they just will you know you live in a tiny little space it's gonna get dirty you're gonna be cleaning it out every couple of days so have mats or rugs that you can shake outside and yeah that's that's worked out pretty good for me so far so the next thing you probably notice this massive uh, curtain situation I've got going on here so this is my door to the cab 
Uh, it doesn't get that drafty, but that just helps because obviously you've got the seam in the door and at the bottom. That's the worst bit. And just having that, you know, just helps keep it all in, keep it cosy. I'll stuff it into that corner as well because um, the seals on these doors aren't particularly great, if I'm honest. So I always have that wedged in the corner. And then down here, down at the bottom here as well, I've got a blanket shoved all the way down into because I don't use the side door at all. That's just my personal preference. I don't bother with the side door because no point really is there. As soon as you open it, the whole heat of the van is just going to go out anyway. Um, I always use the front cab to get in and out. That's why, in my opinion, when you're building a van, having access to the front is uh, should be a number one, should be a, a definite when you're building it also have a curtain here that's covering the doors to the garage so as you can see these doors lead into the garage area I mean literally just lifting that curtain then I felt how much uh, cold air just came through because that's just a plywood door um, realistically I probably should have insulated that a bit better but oh well so that is massive help <laughs> definitely um, because it's, it's freezing in the garage, but having that there just stops it. Obviously all of this is all insulated. But yeah, just little things like that, those curtains down there, that makes a massive difference as well. Even this uh, on the sofa, because I've got, the sofa is like, it's not leather, but it's fake leather, if you can see that. Um, you know, just when you initially sit down, Obviously, that plasticky leather stuff's freezing, so just having a blanket on there takes the edge off uh, when you first sit on it. It's just the little things like that that just make it a bit more comfortable. Because at the end of the day, this is my house. So if you if you have been following along, or if you haven't, just to kind of give you an idea that this isn't just some sort of like I stay in the van at the weekends kind of thing. Um, on every video you know where the little bit comes up in the bottom corner and it's got this sort of place where I am and whatever and underneath it says day blah 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 now I think it's day 178 so that is 178 days that I've been living in this van now uh, that was probably pretty obvious for most people but just in case you were wondering that's what that means. Obviously I've done some trips in this before, like when I went to Scandinavia and stuff, but in terms of actually living in this full time non-stop, it's yeah, 178 days. Um, and that's, in, that's obviously when I was in England as well, because I was still living in the van there. So yeah, I think that's enough time to give some pretty uh, good opinions on things, let's put it that way. So the next thing we can talk about, I guess, is the window covers. Because obviously I've got a couple of windows in here, I've got one there, one here and the whole cab area which I will show you when we go out at the end of this video because I need to move um, but I just made these myself the you know they're not the prettiest looking things in the world I know some people like to cover this side but I wasn't really that bothered uh, I'll show you this one I've not opened this for a few days actually so I have just a cheap roller blind over the top it's like a blackout thing um, and then I've just put a bit of velcro on the bottom there and screwed it or nailed it to the wall because it always came unstuck. That's just so that you can pull it tight and it keeps all the light. So I pop that up. Um, and there you go, you can see I've got one of the covers on this window as well. All it is is two layers of Reflectix. And then if I open the window, I just fold it back like that and there you can see the beautiful chamonix which is where I'm staying now well you can't see it because it's covered in water hang on now you can see the beautiful chamonix which is where I'm living at the minute I mean oh, blimey you feel how cold those windows are so yeah having these definitely helps I think it helps a bit with the double layer as well having this one uh, it's exactly the same thing on there, I just don't have the blind um, on the outside I've got it on the inside of the window so I've just got like a shutter blind here exactly the same thing um, 
but I sort of built this into a box to keep the light and then screwed the bottom down so this one, oh, I'm not going to show you, but you know what it is, it's just got the little toggle thing there and obviously the slats open, you know, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then I just punched some eyelets in there, some little hooks on the top. And you just tuck it all down the side. I mean, that's been working, you know, pretty well so far. Yeah, tell you what, just from taking that off, the temperature difference immediately is ridiculous. So I've also got on the rear skylight there, uh, it's just a layer of that reflective stuff just velcroed up there. Um, I do need to do a better job on that, but it's been all right for now. And then obviously the hatch underneath this plywood is all insulated as well. There is a video on that further back in the channel. Uh, if you want to have a look how I made it, it's quite a way back. <laughs> so the next thing, I guess the most important, uh, besides the insulation, is actually getting it warm in the first place. Now, I use a diesel heater, um, just stuck it on again now. I will do a little video, I'll probably film it this evening actually, um, more about the heater. But it's one of the um, one of the Chinese copy units. Um, it was about uh, I think it's 180 quid or something, uh, and it, yeah, it's brilliant. It's honestly, it's brilliant. Like without that, I don't really know what I'd do to be honest. Um, it would be without heating, it would be unbearable. You couldn't do it. Uh, it well, I mean you could, but it would be horrific to be honest. Um, that thing is brilliant. I know there's a lot of stigma about these Chinese ones, um, but for the price difference, I mean, that's about 400 quid cheaper than buying a uh, like a name brand one, and it's been excellent to be honest. It comes with this. This is a good tip. So it comes with a rem it comes with a little remote here. Um, it's a, it's just got on and off basically. I mean, I think this is probably like a flipping car remote or something, but whatever. So I keep that there next to the bed. So when I wake up in the morning, I just reach up, hit the on, get you know, and then curl up in the sleeping bag. Because um, it does get cold in here. Like, if you don't have the heating on, obviously it gets cold. Like when I came back to my van two nights ago, I'd been in town, came back to the van. It was minus five inside the van. So you can imagine if I didn't have the heating, how bad it would get, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's a good a good little tip. Have your remote somewhere near your bed, and then in the morning you can just whack it on, and then jobs are good. And straightforward tip: drink plenty of hot drinks, <laughs> because every time you use the hob, obviously that heats the van up a lot, and if you're insulated properly, it keeps the heat in too. Obviously in combination with that, you need one of these, which is a carbon monoxide alarm. Um, that's a must, like, I don't care what you've got in your van or what precautions you've took, put one of them in, just don't be stupid, put one in and a smoke alarm. Uh, I actually got two smoke alarms, one there and then I have one in the garage as well. Because obviously that's where all my electrics are, um, just in case anything goes wrong in there. But yeah, make sure you've got a carbon outside alarm. For the love of God, don't take the chance because the thing with carbon monoxide, um, it is the silent killer you wouldn't even know so all it does is it makes you sleepy and then you never wake up that's pretty much how that one works unfortunately I guess that's why I'm semi paranoid about having the heater on overnight I mean I'm like I know it'll be fine obviously I've got safety measures in place that thing makes an absolute racket if it goes off yeah you wouldn't know you'd go to bed at night and that'd be it game over so just don't take the chance. I mean that is pretty much it to be honest. There's no point in me really talking about clothes like that's straightforward obviously 
wear as many layers as you can. You want to make sure you've got a bloody good coat if you places like this, but that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, my sort of normal daily attire is a t-shirt, jumper, and then I've got like my big padded winter jacket as well. Um, but that's more outside. Like in terms of the actual van itself, as long as you do the initial work right, you can just live in a t-shirt <laughs> pretty much. Another little thing that you need to do if you're going to be sort of living in these temperatures is uh, your water system. You're going to need to insulate it. You're going to need to insulate your tank and you're going to need to insulate your pipes. Mine is all internal so it's all built into these cabinets down here but it still froze. Um, my friend who is convoying with me at the moment, her van is completely on lockdown now to be honest. Um, her whole water system's froze solid. Now, it's just because the pipes weren't insulated. I'll show you what I did. I did this uh, yesterday actually because mine froze and obviously you know that's no good so my tank is there my fresh water tank I've just wrapped it in Reflectix I don't know how well it's going to work um, but this tank did start to freeze which you know don't want any of that and then on the pipe I've just got this one pipe that leads up there to the tap uh, I've just wrapped this in pipe lagging and sort of duct taped all the gaps up um, got my grey water tank there that's probably going to freeze at some point might have to do the same to that but yeah that make sure you do that that's a definite 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 if you know you're going to be in these kind of temperatures that needs to happen because there's nothing worse than going to make a brew in the morning turning your tap and nothing coming out trust me it sucks the last thing i suppose is i guess power i've got a pretty good solar setup on the roof but a combination of winter obviously there's less sun and where I'm parked now it hardly it barely works it honestly I'll probably get an hour of sunlight on it if I'm lucky and then that's it which you know is a pain in the ass because I spent a lot of money on the solar setup but it's just how it is so the next tip I guess the final sort of thing that you need to make sure you've got in a van uh, if you don't have a generator of some sort then make sure you've got a split charge system from the front so that you can run the engine um, and obviously charge your batteries up whatever and as an emergency what I actually do to be honest now if I go for a drive obviously then the engines warmed up and everything the heat is coming out warm in the front I will open the middle door point all the heaters through the door whack it up full blast and have that heat coming through engine running everything and put this heater on it warms the whole thing up a lot quicker and obviously it's you know charging the batteries as well but yeah make sure so a split charge system uh, I think mine is a voltage sensitive relay or something um, that just stops it stops it flattening either battery I guess but any, yeah some sort of system on there you definitely 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 need that because realistically worst case scenario for me I have had to do it a couple of times here because obviously the, the diesel heater uses power and if I don't have power, I don't have heating, and if I don't have heating, I'm probably going to die. You know, it's it's no joke. Like minus 15 is cold. Like that's that's cold, cold. <laughs> right, well now uh, pop into the front of the van. I'll show you what I do in the front for what it's worth. Even though the temperature difference in here is going to be biblical, but I shall show you anyway. Oh, your beauty. Woo! It's like walking into a freezer. See, this is why you have the separating partition. Oh, Jesus Christ, it's cold in here. So, hit the lights. Right, what do I have? Bit of a mess in here, I'm afraid. Um, I got the two jerry cans there, that's what I use for my diesel heater. But yeah, so all I've got is the same, the Reflectix stuff, which I've done like a double layer thing. 
for all of the windows it's just press fit and get it out oh, there you go it does help definitely helps obviously it's cold in here because there's no heating happening here right now so it doesn't matter how well you insulate the van if you don't uh, if you don't have a heat source inside then there's nothing to obviously warm it up so so one more little tip for winter when you're starting your van uh, diesel engines have what is basically it, a preheating thing for the it, it preheats the glow plugs and helps it to start easier so you want to wait uh, it's different Mine's like a little wiggly worm thing. Wait for that to go out before you start it, um, because just turning the key straight away is going to do no favours for your engine whatsoever. Let's, let's get that going. This is two-hand operation starting my van, so... There we go. Heard that tick in there. So there's the wiggly worm. If you can see that. So that's doing its preheating thing now so I'm going to wait for that to go out there we go that's gone out so now I can start it there we go it's just looking after your vehicle that's uh, that's another thing because you know if this breaks Ultimately, you're screwed. Then you, you know, if you, if the engine goes, got no power, can't move to sun to get solar, can't do anything. So that's the the best tip I can give you. Do whatever you can to look after your vehicle. <laughs> whatever it needs, any maintenance, whatever, just do it because this is your lifeline, um, and it's the most important thing really that I own. So. I hope this video has been helpful. I mean, you can see, you see my breath in here. That's the temperature difference between the back. Yeah, I hope this video has been useful for a few people. I'll try and make some more things like this um, once I discover them, really. Uh, any little tips and things I can give will be good because, you know, th this is what I was doing when I first started in this whole process was sitting on YouTube and trying to learn as much as I can. I do regret not insulating my pipes before I came, but hopefully that's sorted now anyway, so... <laughs> right, I shall uh, catch you all in the next one. One more super quick tip that I've just uh, figured out for myself, because I'm so clever. Kind of uh, self-explanatory, but apparently I'm an idiot. Don't keep your only heat source fuel in the coldest part of the van because if that freezes, then you're screwed. Put the outdoor temperature into perspective, that lake is frozen solid. Um, look at that, such a beautiful place. And it's all these little tips and tricks that are helping me to wake up to that view every morning.